Hello, my name is Carlo Bergamini, Dynamics 365 Business Central Senior Project Manager at Western Computer. In this video, I'm going to talk about month end close. So, with month end close, there is no standardized process when it comes to Business Central. The only control factor you have as far as month end goes is controlling the posting date of all users. And there's two areas of concern where you're gonna be going to, to control that. So the first area is the general setup. And in here you see two fields, allow posting from and allow posting to. These are the dates that you are gonna control on a month end basis that will allow all users globally to post transactions to. Now they could still create purchase orders and sales orders and journal entries, but if they were to try to post outside of this date range, it will error on them and the system does not allow them to post transactions outside the range. So at every month end, your one task will be to come here and control the posting dates to all users within Business Central. So we're in June, and then when it comes to July, you're gonna go and change this to July 1 through July 31st. So on a monthly basis, every month you'll go in and make this change. Now, if you're at the end of the month, you obviously wanna control globally all users, as I mentioned, but there is another section where in the user setup, This user setup, I allow myself to post in prior month along with the current month. So because I'm part of accounting, if you will, I let myself open and gave myself, myself only, permission to post in a prior month, being 531. And I could still post through 630. So this setup within a user and a user by user basis allows that user to supersede the original global setup. So based on the setups that you just saw, all global users across the board could only post from June 1st to June 30th. But for myself and others that I choose, I will allow them, him or her, to post in a prior month, the last day of the month, so they could complete month-end transactions. And then once they're done one month-end, you can either remove it or change them back to the current month and now they are also matched to global. So you could set it up on a user by user basis or the combination of the global setting in the general ledger setup, as well as the individual user by user setup. So that's where you're gonna go and control your month end activities as far as a user posting transactions. That's the only thing that needs to be done. So how could we also make your month end a little easier when it comes to all the activities? Well, everybody's different, right? Everybody has a different activity. Everybody has a different purpose at month end. But you could set up user tasks so that way every month you know what you need to do at month end. So if I click into here, as you see, it's zero. I'm going to create a new task. And let's just say... receivable report run and balance to AR report so one of my functions is to run the AR agent report so that way we know that the total of the report ties to your receivables trial balance number I could assign it to whoever I want to assign it to I'm going to assign it to myself I could also assign it to a group, maybe the entire accounting group, and at the accounting group, you could formalize and make the whole accounting department responsible, and whoever does one task first gets to complete it. So it could be done on a group basis as well. But in this case, I'm going to do it to myself. I know it's going to reoccur, right? I need to do it every single month. So I'm going to go up here and click Reoccurrence, and I want to start it as of, let's say, June 30th. Oops. Yeah, 
zero six thirty. I want it to be every month, and I'll do it for the next. Well, we'll just say twelve months. So now let's go six months. So basically, what I'm saying is, I'm going to start on June thirtieth. It's going to recur every one month, and I'm going to do it for the next six. I could do it for the next thirty-six if I wanted to. I was just going to do it for six. And then down here, I'm going to say, what is it? I'm going to link to the report. I'm going to go find the report. And it's best that you just go right to search. And I'm going to type aged accounts receivable. It's going to find it here, accounts receivable. Click OK. And I have that. So let's go into another one. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to do, let's say, verify. JE. Verify all open journal entries. I'm going to assign it to myself again, but again, I can assign it to anybody I wish or a group. I'm going to make it reoccur once again. I'm going to start as of June 30th. So I'm going to go one month and for the next six months. I'm going to go to page. I'm going to go to table info. And so forth. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to close this out. And you see, now my user task, I have went from zero to 12. So every month as I go through this, I'm gonna click in here and see what I need to do. And as of my due date 630, assigned by me, I need to run my receivables report and tie that to trial balance. So all I gotta do is click on this, verify my information. I can go to actions, go to task, Opens up the report. I'm going to run it as a 0630. And then I run the report. Once I'm done with that task, I can edit this and say that I'm 100% done. And now you see it is now gone. You see the first line was 630. If I get out of here, I'm down to 11. So you'll see that I could control my month-end task with the user task. It's, and I could, again, assign it to groups of people, users, individual users. But the idea is now, on a monthly basis, I know what I need to get done throughout the month on a month-by-month -month basis. Makes it a lot simpler and a lot more organized. I also have another option. A lot of people ask about, how do I know if all the entries have been posted? And that was one of my tasks, right? So if I go back to my task, verify journal entries. So if I go into this, I'll click on to this. I'll go to my task item. And what this shows me is it shows me all the tables. And I took the liberty to actually set a filter of just seeing the actual journal lines. So basically, I just set a filter, preset filter, and it's always showing me my tables that relate to journal lines. And you'll see they're all zeros, which is good, until I get to my general journal, which is eight. Item journal is eight. Job. So now this is telling me that I have open journal lines, and it's actually a record size, the actual value. So if I click in this, I can actually hyperlink, click into the number eight, it's going to show me. What are open? So it keys me into where to go and what journal lines are open. So out of those eight lines, it's showing me two of them are assets. I got a cash receipt line, a cash deposit line, and four payment lines. So now this tells me that I need to go to either my tables manager, my AR manager, and make sure that they actually complete their tasks. So that way those journal lines are now gone. Because eventually what you really want to see as I go back to that is, I'm gonna go back to the table information. You wanna make sure as part of the month end close that all of those journal lines are set to zero like all of these. So all the way down the line, you wanna make sure everything's zero or at least has a reason why 
there's some open records there. Now, if I like this table, whether I sign it with my task, I could also put a bookmark on here. So if I click on this bookmark icon and I get out, now you'll see table information is here. So I could now also build a menu based on all the tasks I have. So I could either do it up on a menu form or I could do it as a pending task as well. It all depends on how you want to see it and how you want to present it. But certainly, I would recommend looking at table information as one of your month-end tasks, along with reconciling your AR and AP. And what we could also do is, when it comes to running depreciation, if I wanted something like that, I could go to my assets where I run depreciation. And with my fixed assets, I could just go into click on my little bookmark, I close this out, and you'll see now I have fixed assets. So now in a way, I'm building my menu for myself. At the end of the month or throughout the month, I know where to go by clicking and creating my own special menus on my month end task. So that's another way of being organized and listing out what you need to do on a month end basis. So you have the menu option or Better yet, you have your user tasks. So that way you go into the tiles and you know on a month-by-month -month basis what you need to accomplish every single month. And then that way you can set your percentage completed. If someone wants to know, hey, where are you at this point? So if I go into here once again and I want to update this to say I'm only 50% done, at least now, people will see where you're at. Your manager, your accounting manager, knows where exactly you are. Oh, he or she is actually 50% done. If it's not on the list, that means it's been completed. So that's how you can control and be a little bit more organized when it comes to month-end process. Thank you for spending some time watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all things Microsoft Dynamics. Feel free to contact us at www.westerncomputer.com if you have any questions. Thanks again.